So let's go back to the beginning. The sales model is being covered in its entirety. We have the pre-planning before we call on the company. We've got rapport where we are differentiating ourselves from every other salesperson who's coming through the front door. We are building the trust and we are getting permission to ask questions. Okay, so we've got attention getters, we've got a credibility statement, we've got an agenda statement, we've got opportunities to bring insight, some documents, some research to the client to start building that relationship of trust and the key thing is get permission to ask questions. Once you have that permission to ask questions, then you start asking the questions and you start, it could be a should be or an as is, it doesn't matter which goes first, but where are you now? Where do you want to be or where do you want to be? Where are you now? What's stopping you from being there? What's the payout for you? Dominant buying motive for you. And you've got different types of buyers. You've got the CEO, you've got the CFO, you've got the uh, technical user, you've got the user buyer. They all going to have a different vocabulary requirement. And then you've got personality type. They might be an expressive, assertive and people oriented. They might be a driver assertive but very task oriented. They might be an amiable, people oriented but not assertive. They might be an analytical, very non-assertive but very task oriented. So depending on what seat they sit in and what personality type they are, we adjust our language to suit when we're going through that questioning skills process. And so when we get to the end, we tell them, yes, we have a capability statement. Yes, we can do it. We've done this before. You give some evidence. You assure them that your solution will deliver what they need. And then you go in and introduce the solution. And you start with, this is the fact or feature of what we can do. Link, bridge across to, that's important because there's the benefit. Then this is very important. What's the application of the benefit? Just saying the benefit by itself, not enough. What's the application of the benefit? What's some evidence of that benefit? And then we go into a trial close. All right, so we've gone through that process. We get to the trial close part. We start to see, we judge their body language, judge their actual language. Is this something we're going to get an agreement on straight away? If it's an agreement, we're going to get to straight away. We go straight into value summary, where we talk about, you told me your primary interest was this. Our solution addresses that then paint a word picture of what success for them looks like based on your solution that you provide. And then you go straight into your commitment stage, adding no more information, but getting to an agreement and then start executing on the agreement. All right? Now, if you get to the point where they don't fully agree, they have some hesitation, they have some objection, they have some concern, then First of all, we cushion it. Okay, we don't answer straight away. They say they have a concern. We make a cushion, which is a neutral statement. We then question why they have that concern. And then we keep questioning it till we get clarity around what is the real problem. Then we go into are there any additional things apart from that which is a problem for them? Remember that iceberg analogy under the waterline is the real problem. We've got to get to that. Additional, then we ask, is there anything else that's concerned for them? We're digging, we're digging, we're digging. And only then do we respond. Now, we might deny it, we might accept it, we might flip it around, take a negative, turn into a positive. We might just ignore it. We might ask them to prioritise, which is a key area, and respond to that. We get into that response, and we have clarified that we've actually answered their concern. We go into trial close again. If we get a positive, then we go straight into value summary. We go into the closing, one of those closes, direct close, alternative choice, um, minor point, etc. that we did before. And then go into execution of making it happen. If you still get a concern, go back, question it. Why is this a concern? Go back to the objection handling. So you keep repeating that process till you get to a point where this is not a buyer anymore. Or, and you should leave this situation and go and find someone who is a buyer, or you get a yes. Now, anytime anyone tells you 
a no, question it, doubt it. Right? It might be a no today, it doesn't mean it's a no forever. In some of the role play that you did, the no actually turned out to be a no at this point in time for budgeting reasons. It's not a no forever. Right? So you've got to really understand, is this a no forever or is this a, a no at this particular point in time? Okay, and that's the entire sales cycle and then you get into the follow-up stage where you're delivering on what you said you'd do and you're keeping in touch with the client and looking at things that are making sure that uh, things were delivered on time in the way the client wanted it and checking that they're happy with that. Right. Do you have any questions on the sales model? Because this is the whole thing now. We've gone from beginning to end. As you see, it's a structure. If you don't have trust, doesn't matter what you're selling. If you don't get permission to ask questions, you're never going to know what it is they need. If you just start telling them what you've got, they want it in pink, you talk about blue, it isn't going to go anywhere. Once you understand what they need, then you need to give them the solution in a convincing way. Having given them the solution, you need to know, is there any concerns, anything you haven't addressed, get that out of the way, and then get them to agree, and then do the follow-up. So that's the process. When you have that process, that structure in your mind, selling becomes easy because you're on track. Now, the client has not been through this training, so they will go everywhere. They will not follow this process. The conversation will not follow this process. It's a bit like that role play you just did then. It went all over the place, right? That's okay. That's life. Your job, though, is to bring it back. It can go off on a tangent. You've got to bring it back. No matter where you are in this cycle, the only place you can probably jump is from solution to commitment if there's no objection. Right? If, they, if they, they love it, they buy it, done. If there's any concerns, you go here. That's the only shortcut. Everything else you goes through that process. So you've got that structure in your mind, it flows nicely. You keep it on track, you keep it moving along. Right? So any questions? All good? All right. So you've done the complete course now for sales advantage. Key thing now is to actually implement it and keep yourself on track. You've got your manuals. You can follow up with that to make sure you're doing what you need to be doing. The pre-planning stage is where you should be reviewing this process before you even begin contacting the client. If you do that every time, then you will always be on track. You won't be stuck. You won't be lost. It'll flow very smoothly for you. Okay, well, congratulations on completing Sales Advantage, and good luck and good selling. Thank you.